In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to measure the loss of coax using a nano VNA. More specifically, I'm going to look at the hunks of coax that I use when I operate portable HF uh, amateur radio operation, so typically below 30 megahertz. So I expect that the loss of each of these cables is going to be quite low. Now I've got to thank, or maybe blame, my friend Pat W5WTH uh, for this video. Uh, he recently contacted me and said he had a hunk of coax that looked like this one here. Uh, he was wondering if it was good for HF QRP operation. I told him it looked like RG316, which is what this is, which I use all the time. And he also asked me, well, how does it compare to, you know, say RG174, which is this coax over here, for portable HF use? And I told him it should be similar, but he said, you know, that would be a good video. So here we go. Thanks, Pat. The samples I'm going to test are two 25-foot lengths of RG174. Both of these I've used in circulation out on my activations. And then also I've got some RG316. I've got a 50-foot length here that I don't use that often. I've also got a 25-foot length here and another 25-foot length that actually has a common mode choke on it. I use this one probably more than any other. But it'll be interesting to compare the performance of each of those over the HF amateur radio bands. We're going to make the measurements with the Nano VNA. So I'll show you how to set it up, how to properly calibrate it, and then go ahead and make the measurements. Now on the VNA itself, I've attached a pair of SMA to BNC adapters because all of these coax assemblies have got BNC connectors. And I want these adapters to be included in the calibration so their effect is going to essentially be zeroed out or taken out as part of the calibration process. So I should only be measuring the attenuation of the cable itself and not of these adapters that I've got attached here. So normally when doing the calibration I would use these open load and short SMA calibration standards on the SMA connectors themselves. But I really want to do the calibration uh, with these connectors included so I'm going to essentially use another high quality BNC to SMA adapter and I'll just put these calibration standards on the end of this here and use this as essentially my calibration standard. Now of course that means that this is going to be included in the in the calibration process but uh, I'm not too worried about it. I expect the, the degradation if any from this adapter to be very small. It'll get me the closest calibration without uh, going out and purchasing a proper BNC VNA calibration set. I think it'll be fine, certainly at the frequencies which we're going to be testing, which is going to be below 30 megahertz. I expect this to have a negligible effect. So the first step is going to be to set up the frequency range that I want to do the testing over and perform the calibration. So we'll start by going to stimulus and setting the start frequency. In this case, I'm just going to start at 1 megahertz and we'll set the stop frequency at 30 megahertz. This will cover the HF bands that I use most often when operating portable, which is usually just 40 meters and 20 meters, or 7 meg and 14 meg. Next, we'll start the calibration process. So we'll go and hit back, calibrate, and then hit reset to clear the current calibrations. We'll hit the calibrate button, and we'll start with the open. So I've attached the open to the uh, little BNC to SMA adapter. We'll connect that up here, and we'll touch on open. And now that that is switched to short, that tells us that that calibration is done. So we'll now remove the open and attach the short to the end of that adapter. And touch on short and let it make the measurement on that. And next we switch it to the 50 ohm load. Connect that up to the end here and connect and hit load. For the isolation, it's a good idea to terminate um, the port 2, which is channel 1. We'll move the 50 ohm termination down to there, run the isolation calibration, which really isn't going to affect the results for our measurements here, but we're just to complete it. And next we're going to do the through. For the through, I'm using this short piece of uh, high quality coax that actually came part of a, a, a an oscilloscope uh, spectrum analyzer set. So I know it's a good high quality low loss piece. We'll connect this up to the two ports for our through standard and we'll hit through. And now that we're done I'm going to select say slot 5 
to store this in. So now my calibration is done. Let's move on to setting up the display that we want to look at. Now the only measurement I'm interested in is the loss. And that would be the S21 measurement. So if we go in here and go to back and go to display and trace. Trace is currently an S11. We'll select it, turn it off. The trace one now is also is an S21 measurement. We're going to keep that one. The Smith chart, we'll turn that one off. And we're left with trace three, which is a phase measurement. I'll just select that and turn that one off. So we're only left right now with trace number one, which is the S21 measurement. Now I'm going to add three markers uh, at the frequencies that I use most often. Well, actually, I really only use two, but I'll set up three markers here. Um, we'll go to select marker number one, and that marker I'm going to move to about 7 megahertz because that's where I spend a lot of time on operating portable. So if I move that up here with the jog wheel, let's get up kind of close to where we want to be. So there's there's 7.09. That's going to be down at the lower end of this uh, 40 meter band. Uh, just a little bit above the CW portion, but that's perfectly fine. We'll select marker number two. Let's move marker number two to the 14 megahertz band, or 20 meters. Let's see, so there's, let's go, go down 14.05, perfect. That's a, very close to where I typically operate. And we'll put the third marker, uh, we'll put that in the 10 meter band. So let's, let's kind of put the third marker that are in a little over 28 megahertz here. So let's see, there's 28, 187. So now I've got those three markers. So marker one at 7.09, marker two at 14.05, marker three at uh, 28.187. And if we look carefully, because we've still got the short cable connected and the calibration was done with that cable, you can see each of those is showing me zero dB loss, and that's what we expect. Now it's really just a simple matter of hooking up each of our test pieces of coax. So our first one here is the RG174, this 25 foot piece here. We'll connect that up to port 1 and port 2. And if we take a look at the measurements here, we can see that in the 40 meter band, our loss is about 0.58 dB. On the 20 meter band, it's about 0.77 dB. And on the 10 meter band, it's about 1.11 dB. That's probably about what I expect. Now next up, I've connected up my second example of a 25 foot length of RG174. And it looks like the results are really similar. Uh, 0 0.58, 0 0.74, and 1.08. Very, very similar to the first 25 foot length of RG174. All right, next up is the 25 foot length of RG316. And uh, again, similar results, just slightly better than the RG174. 0 0.53 on 40 meters, 0.63 on 20 meters, and 0.91 on, uh, on th uh, 10 meters. Now next up is my workhorse, the one I use most often, 25 foot length of RG174 with a built-in uh, common mode choke. And uh, again, 40 meters, 0.69, uh, the, on 20 meters, 0.81, and on uh, 10 meters, 1.02 uh, dB. So I expected it to be a little bit worse, the connectors are probably dirtier, uh, the cable might have a, some nicks and, and crush marks and things like that in it but from being used and closed in the door of the car and things like that. But again, still uh, quite low loss, so I'm happy with that. And finally, here's the 50-foot length of RG174. Again, I expect this to be worse than all the others because it's twice as long. And uh, it is a little bit worse, but it's really not that bad. So uh, again, 0.99 or just about 1 dB of loss on 40. 1.4 dB of loss on 20, and about 2 dB of loss on 30 meters, excuse me, on 10 meters. As expected, these numbers are all basically just about double the best of what I'd seen on the other ones because it's double the length. So that's about what I expect to see. Yeah, well, there you have it. There are my quick results on the 40 meter band, 20 meter band, and 10 meter band for the five hunks of coax that I carry with me in my portable operating kit. Uh, typically I use the 25 foot lengths. I, I don't very often use the 50 foot length, but it's there uh, just for comparison purposes. And again, I mainly use this RG316 with the common mode choke in it, uh, but uh, the numbers are all really, really similar. And all of these numbers, even up at uh, 
28 megahertz. You know, only about a dB or so of loss, which is barely perceptible on the air, both on transmit and receive. So I'm really not that worried about it. If I was approaching, you know, three or four dB of loss, then I'd start thinking about it because then we're getting close to a half an S unit, close to an S unit of uh, attenuation. But at these numbers here, all would be perfectly acceptable for operating uh, the HF bands uh, out in the field. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll learn a little something about how to set up your nano VNA to make coax loss measurements. And if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you again for watching. A little bonus shout out to, uh, to John Muggs Ferguson, uh, KC3UDZ. Uh, a little while back, uh, he had 3D printed and sent me this really cool stand that I've been using here for the Nano VNA. It's got my call sign in it, got a spot to put the calibration standards, holds the device at a neat angle. So I don't know if I got a chance to properly thank you there, Mr. Muggs, but uh, certainly appreciate it and uh, I'm definitely putting the, uh, the unit to good use. So thanks again for being a loyal viewer. And thanks for such a cool little gift there. 7-3 all, and see you next time.